He's a PlayStation champion in Manchester. You know, he's done exceptionally well at Gfinity. You know, he's been at ESL, uh, ESL Germany finals there as well, involved in a number of competitions. But nevertheless, we are here live in Paris for the FIFA E Club World Cup. The first leg of the two. PlayStation was obviously picked first from a, a coin flip. The, the big coin in front of us now has got a PlayStation and Xbox side on it. Is that going to be a favour to these guys or not? Well, it's the exact same fixture that we, we faced in the group stage, Brandon. Two big stories for me coming into this game. You've got the back-to-back -back Club World Cup potential champions in Bromby, and you've also got Envy, who just seems to be cleaning the floor right now with FIFA Esports. Gfinity went very far in that tournament, went out to the eventual winners in Roma Fnatic. In Manchester, what happened? Ice Vogel, representing Team Envy, went all the way. He's the PS4 champion. He's the best PS4 Ice player Vogel in the world if he right can now. Find it. Cuts inside Ronaldo, trying to just find a way through. The defence of the great Dane, obviously representing a Danish football club in Bromby. And, you know, you've got to speak about Bromby, as you said, exceptionally well last year. They won the tournament in London. Quite big shoes to fill as well, with Expect Sport in leaving to go on to Manchester City. Well, All these comes. Bromby players have come in and they've done a job. As Spencer said earlier, they might not have been the best team over the couple of days, but they've peaked at the right time. They've hit their form at the perfect time in the semi-finals, beating Makers in the final right now. Can they replicate that same performance? And if anyone was listening, you know, throughout the day, I said they've got better every single game in this tournament. You know, every game they play, they've got a little bit better as we've gone towards the knockout stages. It's better to peak at a time where it really matters the most. And, you know, looking at the stage now of, of the playoff spots, of course, technically this would be worth four on the door. Icevogel, he's got the playoff spot already without this competition. Aero, he needed it. He's got one of those spots now then, on the other hand of it. You know, the playoff spots are really working into a number of guys' favours, even down into the semi-finals as well. Yeah, Prince Bay taking hold that playoff spot. It's and the Royal. And the Royal as well. It's funny you say about peaking too early. It's almost like if you're doing 100 metres, running your 100 metres, your best ever, your personal best, in the heat. You don't want to do that. You want to save your best performance for the final, for the trophy, for the money. And of course, to be the champions here again. Of course, you heard there from FIFA Fredberg. Heel to heel. As he comes through now with Ronaldo. Tries to cut back inside. He loves the skill moves. And he can do it in such a good way as well. If you're looking to his face cam now on the right-hand side, that's a coach there that's been with these guys throughout. The nice Vogel. They've just been supporting each other. Aero on one side and Jazz on the other. Yeah, heel to heel into that fake Rabona, just trying to create a little bit of space. But I think it's going to be a very tentative first leg, this one. You didn't know already. Aggregate scoreline between the two. Away goals mean nothing. Extra time will be needed. And it's been a great format to see. We've seen a number of different formats this year across the board of competitive FIFA Swiss style. You've got the Gfinity style as well. Um, different, you know, formats with the virtual Bundesliga every single team had to have three players from each Chance. club maximum and now we're here with a different one and we're in the last game the last aggregate game as Ice Vogel comes forward now on the edge of the box to strike save, what David a save from David De Gea if you want to win trophies your goalkeeper has to play well it looks like David De Gea is about to have one of those games what routine on that one for him of course the man of all the talking points the King Fisher is a number of people have told me I probably say too much. It means he's Ice Bird. He said he doesn't mind Kingfisher though. He, he is the Kingfisher right now. And if you look at his badge as well, I believe it's some sort of bird on that um, throughout. He's used that. And he's one of those, you could say, newcomers onto the scene, obviously, under the agency of Stark Esports and signed to Team Envy. Yeah, last year, a lot of people in the German scene said, this guy's going to be special. Just give him time. Safe on the rebound. Ronaldo will try and get that shot away. He loves a ball row in tight areas, and one thing that both these teams have is passion. When Fred Berg scores, you hear about it. When Ice Vogel scores, maybe not as much. You may see a little bit of reaction from him. You're going to see them teammates behind him, though. Jazz and Aero. They'll be very, very loud, very lively. And that's what you need sometimes, just to get yourself going. Not only does it hype you up as well, do you think it intimidates your opponent a little bit when you're giving that big celebration? Well, you saw Fred Berg, he was, you know, not being unsportsmanship, but he was celebrating towards Principe, there's a shot, that one saved David De Gea in the semi-finals, just to say, you know what, I'm passionate about this, I want to go all the way for my club, and it's been a long time coming for these guys. Well, the mental side of it is huge, isn't it, Brandon? Every single time we talk about FIFA Esports, 
the skill level is so high right now with the pros who are playing here. It's all about that mental side of the game to be able to deal with the pressure when things aren't going your way, potentially in the game as well. You have to be able to keep your composure. Carl Walker cuts back into it. Look at the space for Ronaldo! The King Fisher strikes first in the final here. Ice Vogel and Team Envy have a one goal lead. Just the space opened up for him. And who else would it be but that 96 R9 icon Ronaldo breaking the deadlock once again in a major FIFA final. One touch out of his feet, low driven shot past the goalkeeper. And this is what Team Envy do. And more importantly, this is what Ice Vogel does. He performs in big tournaments. Not how Fred Blake would have expected it to go for himself in the final. He knew it wasn't going to be an easy game at all. He said this is going to be a completely different game to the group stage when these two met, because Fred Berg did beat him. Lovely bit of skill there. Tried to pull out something special. Yeah, performed the El Tornado, wins himself a free kick in a good area. Look for him to put a couple of men over the ball and then run over it. Well, the, the free kick way we've seen, or well, the method, sorry, has just been played short. So it's going to be into De Bruyne. And use the skill he can. Obviously, Kevin De Bruyne said is waiting there for it. Will fall to De Bruyne, he'll get a shot away. And just a bit of power was taken out of that by one of the trailing defenders of Ice Vogel. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, Sergio Ramos took the sting out of the shot. But Fredberg done very well to win it back there in a good area. Both of these players very direct with the way they play. We've seen a couple of different play styles this weekend. Some were more of a possession base, but skill moves out in full force for the, both of these two. Attacking FIFA. They want to give their teammate the best possible chance of winning. If you can build up a good lead, 3-4-0, and give it over your teammate in that second leg. Back post, look at the back post. Someone that's trying to build up this lead for his teammate. Is Ice Vogel. Messi with the second in this one. We haven't even hit half time. Poor defending, you have to say. You have to ask questions. Where was the right back for Fredberg there? If we can see on the replay. Was Kevin De Bruyne that to pull himself in to defend? Where was that right back? Yeah, great first time cross to the back post. Took his time as well, he didn't rush it, brought it down with Messi and then just a toe poke past the goalkeeper to double his lead just before half-time. We know more than anyone, competitive FIFA is a long, long game. You may be, what, six minutes off with the stoppages involved, that feels like a lot longer. You know, you've seen turnarounds before in 10 in-game minutes of FIFA, three goals being scored in there. Anything can happen, especially at this competitive level. A goal before half-time, though, for Fred Berg would be nice. Sergio Ramos half-clear in that one. Like a pinball around the box. Just get rid of it, get yourself into half-time. And more importantly, take a breather, and you should be very happy with this first half. Yeah, something about Ausvogel as well. He's not scared to pass it out from the back, and especially in really, really risky situations. He'll pass, pass pretty much across his own six-yard box to try and just create a chance. See there at half-time, everything even but the scoreline. Four shots, four shots on target for both of these two players. Possession slightly in the favour of Ice Vogel. 92 and 91% pass accuracy as well. And you can see the 4 triple two is in use for Ice Vogel. Maldini at centre-half. That prime Maldini alongside Team of the Year, Sergio Ramos, Kante and Vieira at CDM. Hull it at right cam. And a 4-1-2-1-2 in action for Fred Berg. We can see over there, Carl Walker in use. Maldini at the back for him as well. Um, but right now, he needs to start improving. We often do see Hully at right cam. You can see there, getting to the box for crosses. That's very important. He's, he's like six foot three. He's got the jump and he's got the strength. He can get up at that back post. The back post cross, so effective this year in FIFA. Stick it into the back post area. If you've got a six foot three fullback against a five foot ten uh, I should say, a 5'10 fullback against a 6'3 attacking midfielder, you know he's going to win that every single time. And you, know, and, we, and you can see the stats as well that they do possess. Not all fullbacks have a good jump. I think uh, that prime Zanetti's got 50 jumping. Now, even Messi would challenge that. Well, the King Fisher comes again. Is he going to get another one at the back? Rebound. Messi off the post on the get of the rebound. David Ayer couldn't even get there with his feet. A painful way to see this final go for Fredberg after such a good tournament. Perfect time to score for Ice Vogel just before half time and then just at the start of the second half. What's needed right now? You can see Fredberg take the headphones off, take a seat, just relax in your chair for a minute and think, right, do not let this final slip away from me. I know more than anyone I can back Houston 
FIFA Houston. I can back him to come and get me out of this hole. Get yourself at least a goal. Do not go and lose a game by three goals to nil or a three goal deficit. You've said it enough, Richard. You spoke to pros. If the game has lost by a three goal deficit or more, you're in trouble at the end of it. Yeah, going to that second leg, you have to keep the scoreline even. What what you can't happen right now if you're a Bromby fan or a, in particular Fredberg, you can't let the game get away from you. You have to give your opponent some sort of hope. I remember we saw it at the G20 Elite Series, I think it was in the, in the semi finals. Well, in the quarterfinals, I should say. Roma Fanatic were like 8 0 up in the first leg. That's just not acceptable for your teammate. A, what's your teammate got to play for? He's not going to overturn an 8 goal deficit. And B, the game's done on the second leg. Oh, and Aldo has to for it. Oh, he's a free kick. going to say, hopefully that was not going to be a penalty there. That would have uh, maybe ruined the tie. But there's still an Xbox leg to come. And the Joe and Demon will be taking you through uh, here in Paris. And what a tie that one's going to be as well. Aero, an upcoming French player as part of the E Foot de France, the 16 best players uh, selected there, which is an achievement in itself. And of course, he's got a really tough challenge against FIFA Houston. Skills are out. So a bit too Do you much feel like, is it always needed for a skill move? Don't get me wrong, it's good to be unpredictable, but sometimes there's a time and a place. Yeah, just a little bit too much there with the skill moves. How did both of these teams get into the final? It was Envy beating Falcon Esports, the favourites, seven goals to five. And then Bromby picking up an 8 5 victory up against Team Makers. And when you're 3 0 up, it's so easy to switch off. The one man that won't be is Ice Vogel, hunting for more goals, hunting for more chances. Messi, we know he'll be aiming to get on that left foot, well read by Carl Walker. And Neymar in a very defensive and unfamiliar position just to retain the ball and to try and move it forward for Fredberg. You can see the 4-1-2-1-2 two, one, two there. He's got the two Ronaldos up top, trying to work something with him. Look, look for a lot of one-two passes with the L1. And we said it a number of times. That R9, you said, can go one way, can go the other, other way. Sorry, he's got the five-star weak foot. And he's got the stats as well to back up his finishing. You see Ice Logo control there. You can see him flicking the stick. That's the uh, player switch. That's what they often do, won't they? It's a quicker way of switching the right stick. You can do that. Some players will do that again. It's another little thing you can add to your game, which can maybe get you those extra few wins on weekend league and to be competing in big competitive tournaments around the world. Ice Vogel will bring that red strip from Team Envious. 3 0 up as it stands and seems quite content, quite happy right now. I'm sure that whole player area will be over the moon as well. Jazz and Aero. Vieira now into Messi on the right foot! Not always the first choice! I thought you would go with for Messi. We know he's got an unbelievable left foot on him. Instead, I'll go with the right, and I'll score that goal. Four nil. Ice Vogel trying to kill this game before the second leg even starts. Messi on that right foot. He has got a four-star weak foot. Some underrated that weak foot. True. A lot of people will try and shift it onto his left. Ice Vogel having none of it onto his right opens up low-driven finesse past the goalkeeper. And what does Fredberg need to do right now? Well, we're looking. Is he going to play three at the back? Would you make that change? You're four no. nil down. No, don't don't switch to three at the back. At least keep the game open for your for your teammate. We might see something special from FIFA Houston. Well, he's got an absolute stat bench. I'm just looking at it. Pele has come on. Uh, I'm just trying to look who else he has brought on. We'll see any second the changes he has made. But Fredberg in an unfamiliar position right now. Not used to to losing games. But it also shows how. Ice Vogels warmed up throughout the day. These two played earlier on in the group stage and Fred Burr beat him 4-1. Right now, Ice Vogels 4 0 up and he's pretty much had nothing to worry about from that man, Fred Burr. And also, Ice Vogel today has beaten MS Dasari yep. on two occasions. Remember, he lost to him you know, back in last Manchester. year. He's, he's a, maybe a man that doesn't want to repeat the same things two times. He'll go and play him again, play better, and ensure that he has the last laugh and at the moment in Paris he's kicked off this final in an unbelievable way Fredberg now can he get that shot away yes he can and that could be a big goal for the Scandinavian player loads of finesse past the goalkeeper giving team Bromby a sliver of hope in this game who else would it be but that 96 prime R9 what a player he is He's got everything, Bradman. Five-star skill, five-star weak foot. The pace, the shooting, the physicality. And as you said, it just... It's that 
goal. Gap down to three goals, which could be massive in the final. Only a couple of negatives about that R9, you could say, his work rates. He's gone from a, a medium low, which was the 94, to a medium medium with the 96. But it was that debate, wasn't it, when he came out? A lot of people saying he's not really worth it, but that is just because you've got to adjust to it. You haven't obviously played the amount of games you have with the 96 compared to the 94. Yeah, and if, if all the people complaining did actually prefer the 94, we'd see the 94 at events. I can't recall seeing the 94 yeah, R9 true. at an event since that prime Ronaldo has come out. Just 10 in-game minutes left now. Fred Burke can get himself another goal. There's a through ball, if he can find it. Superb defending Ramos. Just pushed him. And Cristiano Ronaldo made him off balance. Otherwise, that would have been a through ball to Pele, and you're thinking, that could have been 4-2. Team of the season, Fernandinho also coming on for Ice Vogel just to try and see this game out. Recently added in with the BPL team of the season from that unbelievable Man City team who did go on to win. And they kind of took up half the team of the season for the Premier League, didn't they? Yeah, with the Premier League with 100 points. So, so many Aguero, items. Aguero on a, on a few people's benches as well, the 97. And of course, Suarez involved. Got 98 last year, was one of the best finishes in the game. Good to see him back involved at this level in the competitive scene. That's a hole, he's just left. Can he find it again? Vieira! What a block on the line. Unbelievable block on the line. A match saving. Tackle, otherwise that would be a four-goal disadvantage for Houston would have been at. Yeah, that could have potentially, if... If FIFA Houston turns this around in the second leg, you're looking back to that moment right there. That is the turning point in this game, potentially. One more chance, maybe, for Fred Berg. If he can get that goal, he can just try and open up the game a little bit more. For Houston, who will be sitting right, you can see him on the left-hand side of the screen there. He'll be, you know, thinking, how am I going to go about this game against Aero? How am I going to... Try and take this man down, but I'm looking at him today. Aero is still quite young. Maybe he needs a little bit more land experience behind him. Suarez, that 97 I mentioned. Is he going to get a second bottle of cherry? Oh, he found his way through, but didn't think he was going to get there. Fernandinho, drag back or two involved. Can say the two centre midfielders are involved. Referee, and in time of two minutes. One more attack, we're going to play. No, we're not. That is game one concluded, and it's a 4 1 lead to MV. 4 1. Coach's opinion here that Houston has the ability to make this happen, but for me, it's all about the first 20 30 minutes of this game. I think Houston needs to score early on to get that momentum on his side and then really box on through from there. If Arrow can get one early, I think he shuts the game down fairly quickly. All right, Houston starting things off on the attack as we saw him do throughout the semi final, a dominant performance from him in that game. Houston trying to work something through. He might get a little lucky here. The ball's kind of fell back to him. Oh, oh he's hit the woodwork from the start. Oh. The goalkeeper's had a mare. De Gea spoons it out and it goes for a corner. Well, that was exactly what I was talking about. A little unlucky that it didn't land in the back of the net, but there's still possibly time for that one. Sergio Ramos turns in, turns out. He shoots. Sergio Ramos is going to put Houston in the lead. It's five and a half minutes on the board. It's game on again. Well... Talked about that first goal, it is so important. A beautiful little drag back to find the lower left-hand corner there. Almost managed to pull it off before that corner, but it's just going to start things off. And the pressure piled onto Aero now of Team Envy to try and protect the lead. And it's that tricky mentality. Do you continue playing your way? Do you try and go defensive, knowing that you still have that two-goal lead? And, and you can just try and keep possession. You know, we just heard about it, how easy possession can be to keep but you can make just one mistake and it could go straight against you. But now it's an attack for Aero. Let's see what he can do with this one. The last time Aero conceded early, he didn't go well for him in the overall game. Surely that's offside, I was going to say. He was literally on the line. And that referee, the linesman, will spot that and will pull things back. I just wanted to uh, actually have a look when the that game was uh, that I was talking about. I think that was... Uh, against Makers in round seven of the uh, of the groups where he lost 4-0 to Kurt. And it just snowballed. Once the first one went in, the second one in, went in pretty quickly. So there is definitely um, some kind of weakness there in Aero's game. We'll have to see, though, whether Houston can actually, uh, you know, really capitalize on that. He needs to get himself settled. 
He's looking like Arrow's certainly settled. This is a real big chance here. Can he get the flick across? It should be cleared. It's a close clearance. It wasn't a comfortable one, that's for sure. A bit of a slicing header, along with that one, a crossfield pass. When three members of Arrow's team sat ready and waited to receive it, but he's going to be looking at that small little minimap on the uh, central of your screen at the bottom there. That's what a lot of players will use to try and figure out the direction. Good chance here, though. Marcelo tries to lean it in there. Ronaldo, R9, tries to set it up, and, well, went for a shot in the end there, or possibly through ball, but Sergio Ramos cuts it out easily. Now, chance to break for Aero. I think a quick bounce back... Well, well, first of all, slow down any progression that Houston and Bromby can make in this game maybe just tilt Houston enough to stop him from scoring anymore. Here is Neymar, tries to get through. Oh. It was barged off the ball and you know nothing. What? The ref says no, there was nothing there. And it's a goal kick. That was on the cusp, I reckon. The cusp of being a penalty. Any more contact than it may well have been. Ooh, deflection actually going very well for Aero there. And to block the shot. And he's getting pressure on the back. There is Houston brings his defenders out of position. They're quickly scrambling to get back in there. Now Neymar tries to find a through ball. Sergio Ramos steps out nicely there to read the play. The double Ronaldo front line of CR7 and R9 looking very good for Houston here as he tries to set up another angle. Can go wide. Henri trying to use it, playing as the cam roll in this one. To Vieira. Oh, it's deflected back to R9. He can't get free of it. It's a free, free kick. kick in a tricky position. We've seen these score, Joe. Yeah, these are the positions where it really is possible. He'll surely take this one short. Shooting directly usually doesn't happen. Oh, what a turn! Oh, that's a brilliant goal from Houston. You've got what to just stand and applaud it. What an exquisite play. Oh, my word. You have to. You have to just stand up and applaud that. It wasn't so much the finish. It was the pirouette before it that just sold the defender on a dummy using the skill moves. We heard Brandon talking about, you know, there's a time and a place when to use the skill moves. That was the time, and that was the place. It's 4-3, Bromby are right back in this game. Well, what a turn of events. I said an early goal may just be the key to Houston toppling Arrow. Arrow though now, he's gonna kick off to Nick one back on Walker. Oh, well, on his left foot, he actually took a deflection. I think he just half sliced it anyway. He goes for the uh, front post corner, but that will be dealt with. So, Houston, 2 0 up. The aggregate score is 4 3, less than half an hour into the second leg. This game is now wide open for the taking. Yeah, it, this is poised for something special, I feel. Last season, Bromby, we talked about being the champions uh, last year in the Club World Cup. What we didn't mention was how it turned about, and of course that was Marcuso, and he had to make a dramatic comeback in his second leg, and it just seems to be the way for Bromby. The smaller, lesser-known team from Denmark have shine in the esports scene here in FIFA. Now just one goal differentiates, but then between the powerhouse in esports uh, of Envy, you guys at home may not know them, as a household name, if you don't follow the esports scene, they certainly are a huge organization based in Dallas these days. They have multiple games to their name, and they're looking to try and click themselves another title here, but it is Bromby that are the ones playing the pressure right now, despite having that three-goal lead coming into this leg. I feel like you're going to have Bromby fans after you know, after you're saying they're a lesser known club uh, finishing second in the Danish they're, League. This they're year. known in Denmark, oh. but they're not, they're not exactly a. a oh, uh, he's Usten. taking it perfectly. There is no problems for Usten here. 3 0. And that ties things back up. 4 4, all square. R9. The amount of space that he's got there as well just shows you how clinical the pass was in there. Finish, of course, as you would expect from R9, nothing but the best. And just like that, we are all squared at four apiece. The pressure on Aero as he went one, two, three, four goals down against Kurt in the group stage was surely nothing compared to going one, two, three nil down in the grand final and squandering a 3 1 lead that your teammates gifted you. I don't want to know how much pressure this guy's feeling right now, but I hope that he can, for his sake, turn this around. Well, he's 
had his chances, there's no doubt about it. One of them, sooner or later, has to go in. Neymar unleashes into the lower right, and De Gea meets it equally with a fist. It's a short corner, quickly taken by Aero, lays it back. Tries to look towards Messi, finds CR7 in the box, but Sergio Ramos, he has been vital. That's a risky clearance there. Ruud Hullet will shepherd out the danger, though, as Rio plays it wide to Carl Walker. Three minutes going to be played added on here in the first half, another 45 to follow, but this is looking really good for Houston. He's just about done everything he could to the script to try and work his way back into this one. Now, can he go that extra step further and take victory here? Or will Arrow try and knock the wind out of his sails just before half-time? It doesn't look like it. It's a 3-0 start in the first half. 4-4, all square and aggregate. And look at that, the tail yeah. right there. Four shots apiece. This is this is this thing, right? Arrow's even saying, it's like, look, I've had just as many shots as my opponent. They've just not been going in. De Gea for Ouston has been playing a blinder. Yeah, I mean, three shots on target for Ouston and obviously up 3-0 at the half. The start, it couldn't, literally couldn't have gone better for him unless he'd have scored five in that uh, <laughs> first half, right? I mean, you could always say, yeah, he could have scored more, but honestly, at this level, I think he has hit peak performance there. Question now is, and interestingly enough, no real break taken at halftime, which I thought Aero and his coach and teammate may just take him there just to out. chat about yeah. it, just to, you know, calm down any nerves, but he feels obviously quite confident here because they've gone straight back into it, having a nice little attack off the start, but that might just turn around here. He had his chances, that's what he's got to keep in his head. He had his chances to score, just didn't quite take them. He knows what he's got to do. He's a very experienced player, and this is looking good, though, from Ouston. Sets himself up, a big chance, and Hullet strikes! and delivers, Ouston puts Bromby in the lead for the first time in the Grand Finals. Well, who would have thought after that 4-1 first leg that would be looking at a 5-4 scoreline in favour of Bromby here just after half-time in the second. Certainly wouldn't have put money on it in any normal situation, but Ewson, honestly, He's gotten stronger and stronger and stronger as the tournament's gone on. And as I said, I think he's hit peak performance here, the way that he's playing. And don't get me wrong, Aero's had chances. He's still got a chance in this one. We've seen four already. There's not a reason why we can't see another two, three goals in this second half in either direction. So Aero needs to keep the head up. This is where the coach can really come in handy. Yeah, remember, there's no away goals. It's straight aggregate straight draw so if it does go to 5-5 we would go to extra time but as it is Ouston doesn't want to go that way looking to try and score once again but Aero recovers now down the left hand side with Marcelo finds himself space for CR7 tries to lay it off to Messi goes hooks it back to Hullet recycles the ball through the middle to clear crisp clean pass in here coming out of Aero this is going to set it up nicely a chance for Neymar just bobbles away from him tries to get the drag back and really well read by Usain there, now with a counter-attack of his own. I think taking a bit of pace out of the game wouldn't be a bad idea for Usain. Although, you know, he's one goal up at the end of the day. The, the 0-4 really does tell uh, a different tale, of course, but I think sitting back now could be an kick. issue. He's got himself a free kick. Advantage was a water, but no advantage was there. Is the step over played it to Holly? He's gonna blast in. He scores another one. Can you believe it? Houston has turned up here in Paris. He's built over the last two days and now in the final. What a turnaround! 5 0 he leads. Well, we saw the first game and we thought 4 1. There's no way it, it would take a really impressive performance to come back from this one, but he has just been hitting. Shot after shot after shot, so crisp and cleanly. He's taking the chances he's been given. He's not squandering them. Aero so far hasn't had a great deal of chances in the second half, but certainly had plenty in the first. He's going to switch things up because he Pele now coming on, along with Salah out on the left side there. So a couple of changes for Aero to try and get things going. He just needs two goals. That's all he needs here. It's not like he's... 
it's beyond him right now. He has his chance. He scored these goals in the group stage. He knows he has it ahead of him, but he's got to make sure in his own mentality, and that's what FIFA is. You know, a lot of it is obviously about skill, but there's a massive mental edge in uh, FIFA that you can have over your opponent. And right now, Ustad is oozing with confidence. And that's what I exactly talked about about his group stage game with Kurt. It just fell to pieces after the early goal went in, and that's what's happened here. Maybe now a chance for him. Oh. Defended well, pull it came in from behind, and I think it was off pull it. Yep, yeah, that will be a goal kick but maybe some mental block is there at this point for Aero. But as you rightly mentioned, yes, this second leg is 5-0, but overall, it's still only two goals that separate them. Ball there, just clipping the ankles of one man, but possession is held. The strength of Ronaldo right there showing in the midfield. It's gone to R9, tries to feed it through to CR7, but not quite working out. Pele picks it up for Ooster. As he just slows the game down a little bit. Hold it with a direct ball. Finds CR7, tries to get a little speed. Oh, oh my <laughs> word! Beautiful to pull out such a skillful goal in the grand finals. Ooston is absolutely delivering on the world stage here. Finds himself 6 0 up in the game, 7 4 overall in aggregate. What a performance from Ooston. Tornado in three goals into the lead here. And I tell you what, you've got to have some self-confidence to do that kind of thing in a final like this. And he's on an absolute run. Six goals now. And we were not so secretly talking to each other in the first half, in the first leg, and hoping that you know they'd score that one goal back Bromby because we thought, you know, we're gonna to get to commentate the second leg and it's just gonna be over by then. But what a turnaround this has been. Did not expect Houston to come out flying the way that he has. And his coach nailed it. He said before the game, you know, he can score goals. I trust that he can score enough to bring us back into it. And he's not just brought them back into it, he's given them a three goal cushion as well. Two club World Cups have been played so far. This being the second, Bromby won the first. Unprecedented stuff to see them. Potentially, oh, oh, come on, potentially take two Club World Cups running. There was such a larger field coming into this tournament. I believe 48 plus teams all playing to get into this position. And Bromby, with different players, I might add, find themselves once again in the same situation where they may be taking victory in another stunning fashion. The last time they won, it ended 8-5. I'm just going to warn you now, there's still 10 minutes to go <laughs> in this game. It's 7-4 currently to Bromby. That would be a quite remarkable turn of events. And, well, I think winning this, we've, this is only the second, as you rightly mentioned, and to win both of them in a FIFA world where we have no real champions that recur that often. I think it's safe to say. Um, certainly, in the last couple of years, most uh, most events are won by a different person every time. Oh, a free kick. To have this kind of thing happen would be pretty insane. Let's see again. Well, it's going to make. Run. We can't rule anything out here now from Houston after that last goal. Just say it. Go with it. He's reset it to get the position. Oh, he's <laughs> actually gone for goal. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you don't often see them going in. It does take a special skill to really try and tip it into the corner to beat the keepers it's very hard in FIFA 18 to do that which is why it's so balls in and he went for it but now Hollett pushed through big chance here yeah! gets the rebound maybe gonna try and recycle it he's gonna try and work it back into the box if he can get through there using Sergio Aguero not gonna work out for him and Bromby will clear the danger Kevin De Bruyne taking it out for FIFA Ooster and taking the sting out of the danger wisely wisely slowing the game down a little bit here there's only a couple of minutes left yeah and for envy fans a bit of heartache it all started so well with that first leg and ice for who's been playing honestly sublimely recently and specifically this tournament has played some of the best fifa of the Red event has indicated they the possible consolation oh yeah no will be pulled it's away and we can hear that two added minutes that's all he has left and to score three goals that is impossible of course at this stage they can enjoy their moment now you know there was a slight tweet 
does this make me the best player in the world after winning the semi-final? Well, yes, Ouston, I believe it does. A 6-0 turnaround from Ouston in the second leg makes it 7-4 overall. It is going to be Bromby that retain the FIFA E-Club World Championships. Amazing stuff, amazing scenes. How on earth did that play out in such a fashion? What a fantastic tournament this has been. And Bromby are uh, once again your champions here. Amazing stuff. Ouston, what a performance, Joe. Um, I, I honestly believe that his coach believed him, but I don't know if his coach believed quite that much. I don't know if he really expected that he was going to come out flying and put six away there.